Hello everyone, back to you in today's uh, first video. We're going to have a look at when it's week 10 days for today's first video, which will take us to around the 15th of December, going into the middle of the month. We'll also have a very quick look at CFSV2 uh, for the next month. That takes us into the early part of January. But all eyes are focusing on the cold weather that's coming up at the end of the week. Before that, we've got quite stormy weather. Um, Met Office just named our uh, third named storm of the season, which is Storm Caroline. That's going to bring severe gales on uh, Thursday to northern and western parts of the country. And as Storm Caroline gets out of the way, then it introduces those cold northerly winds. So it will turn very cold at the end of the week and into the weekend. And then at the end of the weekend into next week, we've got problems as low pressure tries to move in and dislodge this cold air. Uh, there will be a risk of rain or snow through the early part of next week. And that could be quite substantial and significant snow, depending on where that snow line happens to be. But some places might get a little bit of disruptive snow, actually, uh, through the course of next week. I'm going to do snow watch later, where we'll actually focus in on the uh, snow risk at the weekend and into the early part of uh, next week because I can't really, have really got time to go into it in detail for this video, but I will give you a general sort of heads up about uh, what's happening. So just to say, before I go on with all of that, that uh, we released the winter forecast, of course, on Sunday. The video is still here on the homepage. It will be for the next uh, day or so. Um, and it's also on the winter updates page. So if you haven't seen winter forecast yet, check it out and see what you think. We are going for a colder than average uh, winter this year. So uh, have a look at that and uh, see what you think. I've got to tell you about the Christmas shop is uh, still open. So you've still got time to get Christmas presents from Amazon. If you've got an interest shop to do at Amazon between now and Christmas, please click green button that says Gav's Christmas Shop. It takes you to our Christmas Shop page and then from there you go through the Amazon banner as you arrive at Amazon. And because you've gone from Gav's Webby's to Amazon, we get a revenue fee on the things that you are buying. And a big thank you to everybody uh, for doing that again for us uh, this year. So without further ado, let's get on with the uh, first video today. And we're going to start off looking at the stratosphere. Things are warming up at 30 HPA, which is one of the top levels of the atmosphere in the stratosphere. The grey line here is the trend line for this time of the year, and the black line is where we've been with these stratospheric temperatures at 30 HPA over North Pole uh, since September. So you can see from the grey line, we are in a cooling time of year. Typically, we will reach our coldest point of the year any time around now, really, sort of end of December into early January, and then very gradually through the first months of the year, we lift those temperatures up until we reach our peak at 30 HPA uh, in the summer. Well, we went quite cold with those stratospheric temperatures back in November. Through the early part of November, we saw a bit of a plunge taking place there. Eventually, we bottomed out just there towards the end of November. But since we've gone into December, we have had a little bit of warming at 30 HPA. Now, this is not a stratospheric warming it certainly isn't a sudden stratospheric warming, but the temperature has lifted up a bit, and we are now a little bit uh, warmer than average. However, don't confuse this with a sudden stratospheric warming. If we have one of those, we would take the black line within sort of two or three days up to there. They always look very dramatic, and this isn't a sudden stratospheric warming by any means, but it is a minor warming that has taken place. It's probably occurring because of the high pressure that we've got in the troposphere, which is underneath the stratosphere, uh, over the North Pole at the moment. Despite that, we haven't had a stratospheric warming. In fact, we have had a cold stratosphere over the North Pole. We have seen quite a bit of high pressure underneath in the troposphere. And that's the reason we've had uh, relatively cold weather over the past week or two. And with the high pressure, which is basically a bubble of warmer air in the troposphere over North Pole, that may be starting to impact the temperatures in the stratosphere. And all this could well lead, by the time we get through to January, I wouldn't be surprised if all this was to lead to a proper sudden stratospheric warming uh, occurring. Actually, I think we are in for a better chance of a mid-winter sudden stratospheric warming this year than we have been for uh, quite a while. This is how temperatures are doing over the uh, North Pole at 10 HPA in the stratosphere. So just a little bit higher up, 30 HPA. This is the GFS, <coughs> excuse me, the GFS forecast uh, starting on the 13th of December. And we see the blue colours here and the purple colours are the cold temperatures in the stratosphere over the North Pole at that point. We're looking out for green, greens and yellows initially 
and then oranges and reds if we were to get a sudden stratospheric warming. So we go down to the 16th of December, on to the 17th, 18th. Notice these yellow colours are gathering around the Siberian side of the uh, Arctic. That is a warming starting to take place. And that is trying by the time we get through the 21st of December, as far as we can go with the GFS at the moment, that is trying to infiltrate in towards the um, North Pole from the Siberian side. Again, that is not a sudden stratospheric warming on uh, this sort of chart. Let's change over to 10 HPA. So on this sort of chart, the sort of warming we have uh, been signaled there, uh, which is going up to around minus 32 to minus 28. Uh, that would take us to sort of this level. Uh, on the chart. So it would be quite a significant warming if that was to get into the uh, pole. We go to that sort of level. Um, but a sun stratospheric warming actually takes you above that to this sort of level and possibly even sometimes even off the chart to that sort of level. So it is a sun stratospheric warming that we're seeing there, but we are seeing quite a pronounced warming by the time you get through 21st of December, begin to try and get into pole. Bear in mind, this is in the extended range of the GFS. And of course, like all the other output within the GFS model, um, further out you go, the more unreliable it's becoming. So that may not come off. But it is the first indication, perhaps, of some warming trying to push into pole uh, from Siberia in terms of those stratospheric temperatures. Uh, this is what's happening in terms of the GFS temperature and precipitation ensembles. Next couple of weeks, the red line here is the 30-year upper air temperature average. We're milder than average at the moment. and going to stay that way through to Thursday. Uh, but then you see this really dramatic plunge in the temperature that's going on. We are getting close to minus 10 at 8.50 HPA in London. This is the ensemble chart for London. So this northerly that we get at the end of the week is actually being upgraded a little bit in terms of its coldness which is quite unusual because normally for us we tend to get downgrades for cold weather in the UK but this one is actually being upgraded a little bit for its cold potential at the end of the week. Now from uh, the end of the weekend and into next week onwards and that's this period just here we have got a few problems because you'll notice there's a lot of rainfall spikes appearing by the way that's a rainfall associated with Storm Caroline all of these rainfall spikes are areas of low pressure that are trying to push in and dislodge this cold air. So the cold air pushes down with that northerly. Uh, then we lift the temperature up a little bit there. Uh, that's as the first area of low pressure is trying to come in and dislodge that uh, cold weather away. And after that, you'll notice generally the GFS summers are staying quite cold, at least around the 17th or 18th of December. This period just here has got quite a lot of precipitation spikes. And so there's going to be a risk next week of rain for some areas and quite uh, heavy and perhaps even substantial rain but also the risk of snow and, again, quite heavy and perhaps substantial, even disruptive snow through the course of next week, depending on how the milder air from the Atlantic interacts with the colder air from the north. So we're going to have a real headache, I think, trying to forecast next week's weather. Uh, it really is going to be one of those nightmare sort of uh, scenarios. Um, temperature anomalies for the next week, this is going to take us from the 5th to the 13th of December, are coming out colder than average for the UK and Ireland, as is many parts of Western Europe too. The warmth, uh, warm temperature anomalies remain over in the east and the southeast of um, the continent and also across much of uh, Scandinavia. Norway is a little bit colder than average, but Sweden, Finland, um, those sort of countries also coming out uh, warmer than average. So the north, northeast and east to southeast of the continent coming out more than average. The cold is in the west and particularly in the northwest around France, low countries, UK and Ireland. We're really not doing too bad the cold this week or in the week ahead compared to many parts of Europe and not very often we get to say that in the winter um, precipitation anomalies uh, look like that. A little bit bizarre, really, because it's generally above average with precipitation all the way around the country. So to our north, to our west, to our east and across France, to our south, uh, above average precipitation. But the UK itself coming out driving average. And I suppose this is mainly down to that northerly flow um, that... Uh, distributes the snow showers generally around sort of coastal fringes and inland 
uh, you tend to get a reasonable amount of uh, dry weather. I would expect these to trend more unsettled, though, over the rest of the week. So this Alba GFS is looking for Friday and we're bringing down this bitterly cold northerly wind on Friday. That, of course, is Storm Caroline, that area of low pressure that by 6 o'clock in the morning on Friday is over Norway. Um, so that's gone. Storm Caroline has gone by then and taken its severe gales, heavy rain with it. And it's opened the floodgates to this normally flow. And if you follow the ice bath map, the air is originating from the Arctic. It's a proper Arctic source normally that is plunging down across the UK. There's the upper air temperatures for Friday showing that the minus 10 isotherm is plunging down across virtually the majority of the country. Wales, southwestern and southern England not quite getting down to minus 10 at 8.50 HPA. But essentially for Wales and the Midlands northwards we are under that minus 10 Isotherm. Now, you'll probably hear forecasters talking about wintry showers on Friday. These are going to be snow showers. Make no mistake about that. With the temperature going down to minus 10 at 850 HPA, there is no way you're going to get wintry showers. And wintry showers is a mix of rain, sleet, uh, sometimes hail, and a little bit of snow thrown in. That isn't right for such cold a, such a cold day. So that's going to be snow showers. If you're in the mi under the minus 10 ice firm, you will have snow. There will be nothing else falling from the sky. I suppose hail might fall from the sky as well. But certainly you can take rain and sleet off the agenda for anywhere within the minus 10 ice firm. That is pure and simple uh, snow that's happening there. Uh, and that's snow showers, of course. We go through to uh, Saturday. That low pressure is moving away to Norway and we've got the wind in from the north still. So Saturday looks a very cold day. There'll be a hard frost early and late. Probably still snow showers running down these eastern coastal areas. Other areas probably becoming dry as this little bump of high pressure builds in over the country. Now, Sunday brings our first low pressure in uh, from off the Atlantic. The models are struggling with the position of this low pressure. Anywhere on the northern and eastern side of this low pressure will be staying within the cold air and therefore has a risk of sleet or snow. Anywhere to the south and west of this low pressure is within the mild air and has a risk of rain or sleet, maybe snow initially, but rapidly turning back uh, towards rain. So you see the reason we've got such a headache because the exact position of this low pressure is critical. If it goes down here into Bay of Biscay, it'll miss us entirely. If it goes in that sort of direction from Ireland to southwest England, it will mean that most parts of the UK have uh, snow. So we uh, have that kind of idea that would miss entirely. That kind of idea would take the, ra the uh, um, rain down to Ireland, southwest England, leaving most of the UK in snow. And that sort of movement, which is what the 6 o'clock run of the GFS done, uh, does, will bring snow to northern eastern parts of England and Scotland and rain and sleet to the rest of uh, England and Wales. So it's only a very subtle difference that will make an uh, important difference to the actual weather. By Monday, that low pressure is moving away into the North Sea and we reopen the door to those northerly winds. So the cold air comes back across the whole country on Monday and that uh, we keep in that cold air. The cold normally persists through to Tuesday as well, probably bring snow showers back across the country. And then look at this, Wednesday, 13th of uh, December, we are having another go, bringing another area of low pressure into this cold air. So this one, on um, this particular one of the GFS, well, this one is going that sort of direction, uh, which again, it could bring, let's get rid of that and start again. So again, this low pressure is going in that sort of direction on Wednesday next week, which leaves perhaps more of the country a little bit more exposed to a risk of snow. By the time you get through to Thursday next week, that low pressure is off the coast of southeast England. So again, anywhere to the north and the east of this low pressure, which is uh, sort of bad area there, is at risk of uh, snow to the southwest, at risk of rain. By day 10, uh, we've got to Friday the 15th of December. We're back into cold, northerly and northeasterly winds. And then beyond that, this particular one of the GFS wants to build in high pressure for the second half of uh, December. Um, that would be very cold and frosty, but mainly dry there on the 21st of December. That's a very long way out. This is how the ECMWF is uh, seeing things. So this is for Saturday when we've got this northerly wind coming down across the country. This is for Friday, sorry, when we've got this northerly wind 
uh, coming down across the country. And then Saturday, that northerly wind still continuing. Uh, so it remains bitterly cold from Friday into Saturday. Then on Sunday, missing midnight, Sunday, a little bump of high pressure over country. That will be mostly dry and frosty, but there's a low pressure out in the Atlantic. That pushes through much further north with this, with the East Andrea. So here, the low pressure is... Uh, let's go back, actually. So we go... To meet night on Sunday. I mean, we can only go in 24 hourly steps with the East Central US. So the low pressure is up here uh, with the East Central US as opposed to being down there with the uh, GFS. So by the time we get through to Monday the 11th, that low pressure has probably brought snow to much of Scotland, I would have thought. Maybe North East England, but most of Northern Ireland, England, and Wales to the south and west of that low pressure is having outbreaks of rain. So no, no much of waste snow at all there uh, Sunday to Monday with the ECM WF. However, that low pressure gets out into the North Sea by Tuesday. We're pushing wind back into the north again. And then that takes us to Wednesday where it looks quite cold. We've got low pressure again out in the Atlantic up there. What's that one going to do? Let's go through to Thursday. We find that low pressure is down across the southeastern coast. So clearly that one has gone much more northwest to southeast. It's gone from there on Wednesday to uh, there by the time we get through to Thursday. It's a very complex setup, but essentially anywhere to the north and the east of that kind of line would be at risk of snow through the middle of next week with the east of the UF. And then by day 10, again, agreement there with the, with the GFS, we're back into those northerly winds uh, once again. So very, very complicated and complex weather coming up through the course of next week with a risk of rain, significant heavy rain at times, and also a risk of significant and heavy snow at times as well. Finally, just having a look at the uh, CFS V2 for the next month. So these are the 500 millibar heights broken down into wheat peers. The first wheat peer takes us from the 5th to the 11th of December. It looks cold. We've got the low pressure in over Scandinavia, the trough there. The blocking feature through the Atlantic going up to Greenland. And the wind is from the north. So that's a proper cold week coming up there. Then we go through to week 2. Takes us from the 12th to the 18th of December. Low pressure is to our north or to our east. High pressure is in the Atlantic. We're doing something like that with the flow with jet stream. So back to one also looking cold and unsettled as well. We go through to week three, which is the 19th to the 25th, to Christmas Day. And we're reverting more westerly here. So this wants to bring milder air back for the run up to Christmas. Low pressure is to our north. High pressure is going back more towards where we would expect it to be, to the west of Portugal and back into the Azores. So that leaves us with a flat sort of westerly flow. That's milder, still quite unsettled. And then we go through to week four, which is the 26th of December to New Year's Day. And low pressure again is to our north. High pressure is out there. Probably a little bit colder there. I would have thought the flow is going on to a northwest southeast trajectory. So after that milder interlude, the final week of uh, December, Christmas week, may see things beginning to turn a little bit colder again, perhaps, as uh, we set up a northwest to southeast alignment in the jet stream, possibly start to bring some colder air into this trough of uh, low pressure. Wouldn't take that too seriously. I think we've got enough to be going on with for the next week because it is looking very complex uh, next week's weather. So we've got Storm Caroline coming up on Thursday. That's going to bring severe gales to the north and west and heavy rain too. Once Caroline gets out of the way, it opens the door to those Arctic winds Friday and in Saturday it's going to be bitterly cold with a risk of snow showers. We'll look at that in Snow Watch. Uh, later on this evening and then we go through to Sunday and next week we've got real problems as areas of low pressure move in from the Atlantic they come up against this cold air there's going to be a real mix of air masses of mild air masses of cold arctic air masses and exactly where these air masses meet one another that is where we have the risk of very substantial snow potentially through the course of uh, next week. So there are going to be a lot more updates to come as we try to firm up on this weather, but it really is uh, looking quite interesting for the next week or so, to say the least. So do keep checking back for more, starting off with uh, Snow Watch this evening. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.